Hi guys. It is turning into a fine morning. A lovely morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization outside of Ithaca, New York here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this lovely Friday morning August 28th, 2020, and I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. Since it is Friday morning, doing what we do every Friday, <clears throat> and that is uh, check in with our friends over at mangabay.com with Rhett Butler and the folks at Manga Bay who each week bring us our weekly laundry list of assaults against this collapsing planet with or without help from the corona panic. Uh, so we're just going to dive right in this, this depressing trip around this planet uh, without even mentioning the California wildfires I didn't, no mention of the California wildfires, the Atlantic hurricanes, the collapse of the Arctic ice, uh, you know, all the usual ones. Uh, we're going to see what else is going on behind the scenes of the big collapse stories. So take it away, Manga Bay, if I can find my cursor. All right, we're going to start, uh, obviously where we're going to start is the, is speaking of wildfires, is in the Amazon rainforest, which is actually more in flames this year than it was last year. Uh, if you recall, it was right about probably a year ago this week, I believe, where the Amazon uh, wildfires as they should have been one of the single biggest stories on the planet uh, this year and I will let you guess the reason why there is no mention of the Amazon wildfires on the mainstream media the, the mainstream media completely has obliterated any mention of Amazon wildfires as nobody cares about Amazon wildfires except a few people over here at Manga Bay. Now actually, uh, I guess who was it? Uh, Amazon Survival, one of the Survival Internationals, they also in my newsletter today are saying that 10 thousand wildfires have been reported in the Amazon in the first two weeks of August. 10,000 wildfires, which is 17 percent more than the record wildfire season last year. That this is the, the record wildfire season ever. Uh, for the burning of the Amazon rainforest. My little flea bag, he's supposed to get his flea collar today. Anyway, but what uh, Manga Bay is looking at here is, are the major wildfires. You know, kind of like California, there's 10,000 wildfires and about how many of those are major. So we now have a bleak milestone a bleak milestone over the Amazon rainforest as five over 500 major fires detected in the Brazilian Amazon so far this year. And of course, the burning season is really just kicking into high gear. So 516 major wildfires, most of them illegal, covering 360 376,000 hectares, which is just a little bit shy of 1 million acres just from these 500 fires, not counting the other 10,000 burning now, were detected between May 28th and August 25th with the Amazon fire season not even half over 
and expected to run at least through September. Of those 500 plus fires, 12% were within intact forest, while the rest were in recently deforested areas where the cut trees were allowed to dry out before being lit on fire to convert the former rainforest into cattle pasture and croplands. Most of the, these fires were illegal in direct defiance of a total fire ban issued by Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero on July 15th. Yes. Um, the environmental group IBAMA, Brazil's environmental agency, which <clears throat> has fought Amazon wildfires in the past, has been greatly reduced this year, having largely been defunded by the Bozo Nero administration. Yes. Fire suppression this year falls to the Brazilian Army, which has little experience controlling Amazon blazes. So the Amazon rainforest is in flames, just completely out of control. Uh, nobody paying any attention down there. Okay, from Brazil toward to Cambodia, and you can switch the name Cambodia uh, for pretty much any country on this planet, including this one. <clears throat> In Cambodia, uh, a sweeping new environment code languishes in legal limbo. Hmm. Deforestation, illegal sand mining, and other environmental problems are rampant in Cambodia, which has lost nearly a quarter of its tree cover in the last 20 years. Five years ago, in 2015, the country's, the Cambodian Ministry of Environment, which is somewhat akin to the Sancho Panza Ministry for the Protection of Chipmunks, began drafting a new suite of environmental laws aimed at completely overhauling the country's environmental governance. Five years later, the law still remains in draft form, huh? And civil society representatives who were initially consulted say they have been shut out of the process. There you go. And anyway, guys, I am just jumping ahead. I have to, uh, I'm in the middle of building a bog garden, and I want to get out, back out to shoveling mud here to build my bog garden. So what is their featured video of the week is titled Ensnared, Ensnared the Congo Basin bushmeat trade. Good God, if you want to see uh, some pretty gory stuff, if you're, if you're getting tired of your cute cat videos and you want a slice of reality, uh, you can go over there and watch this video of the bushmeat trade in, in the Congo which, of course, is exploding here during the corona panic. Uh, I'm deciding where in the doom is fair to do this rant by this clueless moron, George, is it Monbio or Monobot, whoever, that idiot for The Guardian, talking about how overpopulation uh, is not an issue although even that clueless moron, George, does give a small nod how uh, the, uh, to planet nibblers.
talking about how there is some environmental problems going on in the third world. And uh, if you want to see what <clears throat> overpopulation in sub-Saharan Africa looks like, just go look at ensnared, and you will see uh, <clears throat> planet nibbling personified. Of course, uh, overpopulation nowhere mentioned in the video. Uh, that goes without saying. I maybe the word. I think maybe it appears one time. I. I was also just reading this story, uh, this long story in Time magazine out this morning about these mega cities uh, destroying the planet. And again, of course, nowhere in this long, in-depth investigation about the future of mega cities on this planet did Time magazine ever mention what George Monbiot calls the myth of overpopulation. Yes, uh, tell the, uh, the ensnared gorillas and bonobos and whatever about the myth of overpopulation in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh-huh. Okay, what's going on? Speaking of megacities destroying the planet, what is going on over there in Jakarta? Good Lord, Jakarta uh, being one of the poster children of what megacities are doing to this planet. <clears throat> Lockdown should have cleared up Jakarta's air, but coal plants kept it dirty. Cities around the world have seen an improvement in their air quality as a result of lockdowns and restrictions imposed in response to the corona panic, but Jakarta has been a notable exception. Yes, a new study shows persistently high levels of air pollution in the Indonesian capital come from coal-fired power plants within 60 miles of the city, and Indonesia is set to build more coal-fired power plants in the vicinity of Jakarta in the coming years. Yes, while maintaining emission standards that are much laxer than regional or global standards. Uh-huh. What a surprise. Okay, let's go over there to Norway. You know, Norway, uh, many times, uh, for which is an absolute joke, some people think that Norway uh, has some sort of environmental, you know, shining environmental record. Now, of course, Norway is an oil economy, you know, for, from offshore oil drilling. Uh, but also at Norway uh, is, is one of, is it Norway along with Iceland and Japan, the three countries still whaling. So what do you think you would see during the corona panic? What is your guess? Would you see a decrease in whaling in Norway, or would you see an increase in whaling in Norway? This will be a real test of whether you're buying the deep green lie that, uh, that the corona panic is good for our fellow earthlings. Well, surprise, surprise, 481 and counting as Norway's whaling count hits four-year high. New data show that Norway has killed 481 mink whales so far this year, a number that surpasses the toll from the past three years. Wow. Norway continues its commercial whaling operation despite the International Whaling Commission placing a global 
moratorium on commercial whaling back in 1982. While some of the whale meat and whale products are sold within Norway, the country exports it to countries such as Japan, Iceland, and Denmark's Faroe Islands. Whaling industry representatives say that whale meat sales have gone up, have gone up in Norway during the corona panic. No more comment needed there because, you know, I'm already a conspiracy wacko, an anti-science deluded, oh yes, I am a cherry picker. I have been accused twice uh, in the past couple of days of cherry picking my news about how corona panic is bad for our fellow earthlings. Cherry picking, one, one of them was this, uh, I did a couple of days ago, this in-depth analysis by the Associated Press about how the corona panic has just given, you know, the oil and gas companies uh, all of these free passes to completely gut environmental regulations, but by reading a, an, an in-depth analysis by the world's biggest news gathering organization, I am cherry picking to defend my bullshit claim that the corona panic is nothing but good for this planet. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Anyway, guys, I've got there. I can. Uh, let's jump ahead. Let's go down there to Peru. Huh. Company investigated for timber trafficking gets stimulus from Peru government. This is how Peru and how many other countries are subsidizing. Uh, the destruction of the Amazon rainforest and others. So this is just one story out of probably 10,000 on the planet. Um, the company at the center of the largest seizure of illegal timber ever in Peru was recently awarded $380,000 under a government stimulus program for its forestry sector. Hmm, do you think so? La Arosa was identified as the owner of 80% of the 60 freight trucks worth of wood seized uh, back in 2015 and believed to be bound for Mexico in the U.S. <clears throat> the shipment was slapped with sanctions by the U.S., but not in Peru, where the government of the region of Loreto picked it to be part of the Reactivate Peru Stimulus Program. Yes, national prosecutors and environmental lawyers have condemned the move, but regional officials have defended their decision. Do you think so? Guys, I'm just jumping ahead. You can go on mongabay.com and get this news leader, this newsletter delivered into your own box. All right, what are the Amazon Indians up to this week? Good for them. Key Amazon grain route blocked by indigenous protest. This is the Kayapo Makrango indigenous people have been blockading 
the BR-163 highway since August 17th. 163 is a primary route for soy and corn being moved from Brazil's upper Amazon interior towards the Atlantic coast for export to China and the European Union. Uh, <clears throat> A second source of conflict is the Grand Rail <clears throat> a proposed 580 mile long railroad which would run parallel to the highway. The railway's <clears throat> development has been approved by the Brazilian government without any internationally required indigenous consultation. Yes. <clears throat> Do you think so? Okay. What is going on with the southern pigtailed macaque? Hmm. It is alarming if a highly adaptive generalist species such as the pigtailed macaque, which can thrive even in oil palm landscapes, is now threatened with extinction. Not long uh, after rescuing an infant, an infant macaque from a life on a chain, the author of this, of this uh, story, Sinan Surdai, discovered that this once common species of monkey has now been listed as endangered. Quoting uh, his opinion piece in Manga Bay, quote, conservation has to include all wildlife regardless of their status. As we can see from the pigtailed macaque, the common species of today can easily become the endangered species of tomorrow. Do you think so? And here's one way that can happen. Indonesia bill weakening environmental safeguards to pass in October. Huh. Indonesia lawmakers have ignored expert advice and popular criticism to push ahead with deliberations of a bill that threatens sweeping deregulation of environmental protections. The bill is aimed at making it easier for companies to do business in Indonesia by getting rid of permitting requirements and environmental impact assessments, among other measures. Uh, lawmakers say they plan to pass the bill before their next recess starts on October 9th. Uh, experts, experts say the bill panders to the interest of the business community at the expense of the environment and social interests. And as I was reporting recently from Manga Bay on my cherry picking, uh, of, of course this bill is part of an economic stimulus bill uh, in Indonesia and also that the corona panic social distancing lockdowns and whatnot uh, kept, you know, people and environmental groups from protesting. They managed, the, these protesters have managed to keep this bill at bay uh, for a couple of years, uh, but the corona panic was the final uh, you know, the, the final link in the chain that these planet eaters have been waiting for 
to completely uh, block any protest of this bill. And since there were no protests, no bad PR about it, voila, here it is. And anybody who does not understand the connections between this story and the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, uh, I have no time to get into it now. Uh, so here is an article, you know, looking at uh, both sides of the corona panic in uh, South American wilderness area. <clears throat> Experts say the suspension of human activity, you, you know, from all of these lockdowns, uh, marks a welcome break for the parks on one hand, uh, but the flip side is this, we are seeing a rise in illegal activities and a plunge in tourism revenue are some of the problems that protected areas across Latin America and everywhere else on the planet are facing due to the corona panic lockdown measures. I gotta give this little dog a, uh, a flea bath. You're getting a BATH after this. You know you need a BATH for those fleas, and I hope your flea collar arrives today. It's supposed to. Anyway, guys, uh, I just have to. Uh, here is Manga Bay looking at that uh, oil spill in Mauritius. I guess the the latest tally of dead dolphins were up to 38 dead dolphins that have washed ashore as of yesterday, and by some estimates, they say for every, you know, marine, dead marine mammal that washes up on shore, that 10 more sank to the bottom. Uh, but anyway, let's wind up in the last, one of the last refugees of the Sumatran rhino where we find forest fires set by poachers. Fires set by poachers are a top cause of habitat degradation in Wei Kambas National Park in Sumatra. The park is home to critically endangered Sumatran rhinos, tigers and elephants among hundreds of wildlife species. Yes. Park officials and conservationists are engaged with local communities to dissuade people from poaching. I bet, but anyway, we're gonna go poach some fleas on my little dog. My itchy little dog is gonna get some flea poaching and then uh, we've got to head out to the bog garden for more uh, slinging mud to make a backyard wetland wildlife habitat. I'm, uh, I'm making a move to you know, I'm, I've already got my pond, and now I'm creating a bog to start raising wildlife to eat as uh, Mad Max approaches. I am getting my uh, garden planted. I suggest you get out there and get your bog garden planted while you still can. And if you enjoyed what Rhett Butler had to share with you to depress you this week, please show Rhett some love and upvote this video. And if you feel like <clears throat> actually subscribing to Collapse Chronicles, that would be great too. And anybody who has ever contributed to Collapse Chronicles, 
Uh, I do have a Patreon and a PayPal account to support what I do here, keeping you depressed as we chronicle the collapse of a planet. Bye, guys. Yes, you little itchy thing. I'm, you're going to have to get a BATH. You know that. Touch. You need a BATH. You know, you need, you're an itchy little dog, you're full of the damn fleas, and you need a B-A-T-H. Bye, guys.